So once you have both sides wired up, take your positive red, your negative black leads, put the black with the black, give it a twist. Red with the red, and that a twist. Even up the leads. And one more thing before I like to take it to the soldering iron. I can check for impedance at this point. And the voltmeter. The red tab on the red lead, black on the black, and there we have 13.4, 13.5. Same impedance we had when we tested all four individually. So now we know we have series parallel 16 ohm wiring. Okay, as we did before, we checked for phasing when all the speakers were on the counter individually. Now we're going to do them all together wired up so that everything is in phase. And that voice coil should be moving out. Okay, speaker one looks good. Let's go to speaker two. And that one is moving good, moving out. Let's go to the bottom right. And the speaker cone, yep, it's moving out. Let's look at the cone on the bottom left. And that one's moving out as well. Okay, now we know that all four speakers are in perfect phase. All cones are moving out when we test it with the battery. Now it's time to solder the jack. This is a quarter inch jack and the quarter inch jack tip is always hot. Okay? When we talk about a quarter inch jack, we're talking about the tip is hot and the shaft is ground. So as we said, with a quarter inch cliff jack, tip is hot and the shank is ground. And that's the way your jack will be orientated on your back panel. Now I'd like to do one more test. Once this is, this is the, actually the final step for your soldering. This is to ensure that your cliff jack or any type of quarter inch jack that you're using is, is functioning properly. And you can take ground to the shank and red to tip and give your speakers the same test. That phasing works and then there's the same thing we did when we checked for the impedance. You can do the same thing with the voltmeter. to make sure that everything is operating properly. Ground to the shank, red to the tip, and we're reading 14.4 ohms. So initially we had 13.1 ohms individually, actually 13.5 ohms on each speaker. So by the time everything was wired in and to the jack, we actually picked up one more ohm, which gives us even closer to having a perfectly 16 ohm um, impedance quad. So now we're ready to put the backboard on. I'm going to give this thing one more spin. I'm going to plug the head into it and we're going to play through it. We get some sound through all the speakers. We're happy with the way it sounds. We'll button up the back and really give this puppy a run for our money. One last thing before we button it up. Um, I'd like to just give each speaker a one-on-one -on -one listen. Um, and uh, I hear everything's good, no 
no, no rubbing, no chafing, everything's clear, then I know I'm good and I'm ready to button this thing up. Play me something sweet. I like it. Sounds good. Let's button this thing up, guys. So now we have our quarter inch jack installed on our backboard. Nuts good and tight. And you see all this good speaker lead length here to get the backboard out of the way so that we can do our cabinet inspection. So don't cut yourself too short when you're giving yourself your wire to work with. And you don't want too much in there to get all tangled up inside your speaker baskets. Just, just enough so it lays in the floor. When you button it up, make sure that your center post is still effective and giving you some good back pressure. And you can see I've added a little bit of foam on the end of my center post because as I said, this is a 1968 basket weave. So uh, the little piece of rubber mat that they stapled to this center post years ago has worn kind of flat. So I took some packing material and stapled uh, two or three layers in there just so that I've got good enough resistance in the middle where I still actually have about an eighth of an inch of room to make my backboard good and tight. So I'm going to go ahead and place all the screws in here and we'll give her another, another sound check. I'd say right off the bat, a great sounding speakers. It's a great cabinet to start with, but it'll get even sweeter once these speakers are broke in. Now, if you don't want to bring your ears to the test and drive everybody crazy and playing this thing on 10 until they're broke in, you can, you can break in these speakers. Um, um, and, and the most recommended way that I can tell you is to just put a, uh, your speaker cord in there and put it in a frequency amp and get to where you can run uh, variable frequencies, you know, like a frequency sweep. Um, you don't want to push, this is a 100 watt cabinet. We've loaded it with four 25 watt selections. Um, so 100 watts. So I wouldn't push these speakers more than 50 watts peak during the break-in time. So um, if you have a friend or someone that has a, a frequency uh, amp, uh, the, way, uh, the way to do that is break them in slowly, bring them up 5, 10 watts, 20 watts, 25 watts, 30 watts, peak out at 50 watts and try different frequencies because of course the, the lower frequencies are going to get a lot of movement out of the, out of the cone so it's really going to exercise the surround uh, and that doping will break in. Uh, it won't take 20 years to get these things to sound woody you'll break them in in, in 24 hours. Um, so the most important thing is, is don't overdo it. Take your time. Um, don't go over 50 watts on a 100 watt cabinet. And then just bring them back down um, the same way that you staircased up in the watts, come back down. By the time you're done, you should, it should be a, a night and day difference um, from hearing green, uh, fresh brand new speakers to well broke in speakers. They should sound very woody and full of tone. So thanks for watching in. Um, stay tuned for more DIY projects in the future with Premier Guitar Magazine. <laughs>